Hi, so this short video introduces you to the use of some parts work cards and archetype cards. So we'll be looking at this one in a moment. But for now, there's some others I'd like to introduce you to because they all speak to us in different ways. It's about working with the cards you feel comfortable with. I'll introduce you to a couple of ways that I work with my clients, but it's really unlimited and it's about being creative, working with your client, you know, tuning to their needs and what's going to be most helpful for them. So the ones that I'm going to look at today are the interactive cards down the bottom. And as you can see, there's some really great imagery here um, that support clients to just to get in touch with different parts of them, maybe different parts in the past um, or different parts that are in the shadows or part of their persona now. These come from the interactive range. And if you go onto their website, www.wingedheart.com, org you can purchase these cards and there's also a book called parts work that's another really useful book really lovely illustrations in so this was one of the the interactive cards was one of the pack mentioned in the shadow conversation with the students that's some of the students really like those these cute little devil ones over here are just really fun but they again it's a really good way of just making the shadow and you know it's serious but light-hearted at the same time we don't need to be sort of worried about it and you know take ourselves that seriously we can actually look at these in quite a light-hearted way so these little sh these devil cars you know you can ask clients just to pick them spontaneously or you can actually do some work with them then we've got the Chuck Spazano archetype and shadow pack here. So he's divided his into two. He's got the archetype, the yellow ones, they're in archetype cards that are a little bit more positive, and the shadow cards that are, we might call them a bit more negative. Um, I really like these. I really like the imagery on these cards. Um, they just have one word on, so they don't have lots of words that might and make us interpret them in certain ways. So I really like just like the real simplicity and the graphics on these. So that's three packs of archetype cards. But the ones we're gonna look at today are the Caroline Miss ones. So you can buy these from Amazon. And these ones seem to be the ones that a lot of students really like and purchase. So there's many different ways you can work with these. So some, therapists and i've done this before would just like lay them out so you might lay them out before your client enters the room there's lots of them or you know if i'm working with young people i just give them half a deck each and we do it together so it's really collaborative so you can just lay them out and often what i do when i work with any kind of cars and any kind of imagery i will ask my clients to choose a couple of cards doesn't matter how many the cards that draw them and the cards that repel them. So the cards that they feel drawn to that speak to them. And maybe it's the, the imagery on them that they that really speaks to them. There's nothing there. Or maybe it's the word at the top. So yeah, but choose a couple of cards that you feel really drawn to, that really speak into you, and a couple of cards that you might have a bit of resistance to that you don't like the look of and you feel a bit repelled by. And then just allow my clients to choose. And then that will often just bring out so much. So, you know, often we're seeing like the, the primary self system, the light shadow, um, the parts of the persona that come out, those parts that they're most feel comfortable with. And then often those parts that are a bit more repelling or often those that are deep in the shadow. So that's one of the main ways I work with any kind of imagery card is just, just choose a couple that speak to you and a couple that don't speak to you. So another way is, again, is just to lay them all out and just to ask your client, you know, if there's just like one card or a couple of cards there that just sort of mean something to you right now, a couple of words, don't think too much about it. So don't let the logical mind get in the way. Just spontaneously choose a couple of cards. So we might find that a couple of cards come up. So what is it about that? So I'll often, you know, say to them, you know, what is it about the imagery? What are you drawn to or the words? So the client might be drawn to the color or something in the imagery. And often that speaks volumes, you know, what's in the imagery here. Then with these cards, they can read the light and the shadow attributes. So we've got here the bully, for example. So 
somebody you know bullying comes up a lot in client work you know often in secondary school stage sometimes in primary school you know a lot of clients i work with had bullying in their younger years and are still really scarred from it um so this card can often get pulled and you might start to to notice which cards are the most popular which ones tend to sort of really speak to clients so when you're putting them out you don't have to put them all out so the light attributes are highlights your tendency to intimidate others helps you confront the inner fear that bullies you so there's a real positive to that so often when somebody has been really bullied they put that own aggressive part of them away it goes into their shadows it becomes a disowned part of them and it means that sometimes that person can't always stick up for themselves to assert themselves and to really stick up for themselves against themselves and their own inner bully so the shadow attribute conceals deep fears behind verbal or physical abuse so that's when you know all of those sort of wounds have just been really pushed into the shadows so we can start to see that by working with these light attributes and the shadow attributes that what what can happen is that oh she's trying to get that in that's it yeah what can happen is that the client can then start to be curious and start to claim and i think a lot of this is around our own curiosity our own sense of playfulness with these cards our own acceptance of our own shadow and that these parts are in us all and there's a gift so in the bully there's actually a gift because if we can stand up to bullies if we can stand up to our own bully we need to almost harness a bit of that energy so it's not like an attacking it's not becoming them it's not becoming that shadow and becoming those people at school or, or wherever it is in your life it's just about bringing a bit of that energy to really kind of confront and stand up and it might mean confronting an organization or confronting work you know just being able to really put yourself out there and and that in the process might mean making somebody feel a bit crummy about themselves but that's their learning so these cards are great for just drawing out those other ones so let's have a look at some others let's have a look at the judge because often the judge really comes so there's the picture so what is it that your client's drawn to in that picture what speaks to you when you look at that what do you notice and you know it's quite interesting as we have imagery cards out often there's something else that comes out you know 15 minutes into the conversation something else might come out and i've had clients like physically turn their cards over before because i just haven't wanted to look at something and it's just really representing something that's been in their external world but also probably a part of them in their internal world so the judge the light attributes balancing justice and compassion managing the fair dis distribution of power so that capacity to discern the shadow attributes offering only destructive criticism misusing business legal or criminal authority so if somebody is really feeling like judged by others we can actually really look at maybe where they judge judge themselves do they judge in areas of their life or judge their own person you know often these shadow qualities are really turned back to the self so this is the main way i use them i just have them spread all out and just quite spontaneously and then i might say to a client this is another one that you can choose um another way of working with this is a bit like a pack of cards just spread them out you know, just choose a card so this is really going into the unconscious here and often provides some challenge so we've got warrior here so you know maybe this is something that a client really needs to get into their warrior energy or maybe um they are already you know, very very strong and actually that needs to be toned down a bit so let's have a look to see what this says the light attributes strength skill discipline and toughness of will heroism stoicism and self-sacrifice in conquering the ego so we've got some real inner strength coming through there so a client might not identify with that or may and if they don't it's a really good opportunity to help them to bring that out of themselves and let's have a look at where you have done that in the past and as therapists we all um, usually see that in our clients so we often have heard it in the story as the client's been presenting you know week after week we might be thinking gosh they are really quite strong how have they really overcome adversity in their life but they might be really blind to it it might be too deep in their shadow 
So these cards can really help to bring these out. So the shadow attribute, trading ethical principles for victory at any cost, indifference to the suffering inflicted on others. So this is when it's just taken too far. Okay, so that's the main way I work with with these cards. You can also do sort of readings with them, you know, which might feel a little bit tarot like to some clients and it might not work for some clients. This is really about knowing who you're working with, but we might do a past, present, future. And often when clients have reached that stage in therapy, when they're able to play and able to be curious and you know, sort of take a bit of a chance and just sort of really reach out to the meaning that these cards can have that's often a really good time to just start playing with some other areas so past oh, i've got the warrior present athlete and future shape shifter shifter and these could just be explored in the session just really quite open explored and you know be ready to if a client says no i don't have any meaning in that be ready to put that to the side for now but keep it in mind because often it will come through in the session, maybe even the next week or the week after that they might say, be talking about something that's been very sort of like athletic, you know, sort of very sort of physical that they might have denied um, or that kind of sort of competitiveness that we can actually say, yeah, do you remember that you really couldn't see any meaning in that card last week, but it's really reminded me what you're saying now really reminds me of, of that light shadow in the athlete card or the warrior shadow so we can start thinking and linking with our clients so yeah don't don't sort of push for meaning but just allow the meaning to emerge and allow the meaning to find you so that's the main way so i work with the archetype cards but you might have lots of other different ways of working with them um, as you can see there's just like a, some key main ways but just going back to the beginning i will just ask the clients, you know, what they're drawn to and what they're not drawn to. And so much can come out of that.